welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm gonna walk you through anatomy questions and integrate the ken hub atlas together also there is a big big surprise there's a ken hub giveaway another time guys we are gonna choose five winners this time it's more and i'm gonna announce the winners on my instagram you still have all the way until september 26th and by the end of this video i will show you guys the steps to apply to this giveaway so let's get started with the questions all right so the first question says a 54 year old woman comes to the er due to a hand injury after a fall the patient slipped in a bathroom and sustained a fall on the outstretched right hand and we all know there's like so many conditions associated with falling on an outstretched hand. Um, since then, she's had pain in the wrist, numbness in the fingers. Uh, past medical history is notable for obesity, hypertension. On examination, there is decreased sensation in the palmar aspect of multiple fingers. Lunate dislocation causing median nerve compression is suspected. So he gave away the diagnosis. Which of the following marked bones on the normal x-ray is most likely dislocated in this patient? So the question is essentially asking you, which of these bones is the lunate bone? So I'm going to walk you guys through the Canahub Atlas. And there is a very nice feature here is that we have radiological anatomy. So I chose upper extremity wrist MRI. And it shows you guys everything on this MRI picture. You can see here that this is the carpal tunnel. And where the median nerve is, the median nerve is right there in the carpal tunnel. And if you take a look at the bones up there, this is the scaphoid bone. This is the lunate bone. And this is the triquetral. You can see here that the lunate bone directly overlies the carpal tunnel. So it makes sense that lunate dislocation would injure the median nerve. And this will therefore lead to tingling and carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, this still doesn't answer the question, right? It still doesn't answer the question because he's asking us to point out where the lunate bone is now with the premium subscription a lot like five of you guys would be lucky enough to win you have a video explaining carpal tunnel and everything like that but i'm gonna show you guys right there it's a picture of the scaphoid bone and directly on the same row you got the lunate bone you got here the scaphoid bone is near the radius and the lunate bone is near the ulna so if we go back to the question we know that the scaphoid bone and the lunate are on the same row the scaphoid near the radius the lunate is near the ulna so the d should be the lunate bone and we've seen how it makes sense that lunate dislocation will cause median nerve compression Moving on to the next question. A 68-year-old woman is brought to the ER with severe right hip pain after a fall. She was walking down a hallway when she tripped on the rug and fell against the wall into the floor and landing on her hip. Now, you can see here, without finishing the question, is that her right hip is fractured, right, on the x-ray. And I really like to look at the x-ray first before you know finishing the question so i can skip to the diagnosis immediately and keep thinking about it while reading the question because while reading the question you can see here the patient has a history of depression palmalgia rheumatica current medications include sertraline and low dose prednisone so he's showing you some of the other risk factors you know she's taking a corticosteroid so it makes sense that she has osteoporosis especially that she's also over 65 and she's a female so if you look at the x-ray at first you're gonna diagnose this as a hip fracture and so while you're reading the question i have in the back of my head the diagnosis this is hip fracture 
everything mentioned in the question will be, a, I will think about it as a risk factor for osteoporosis. You get the idea? So I could prepare myself for any further questions. She also has a 40 pack year smoking history and she's hypertensive. Blood pressure is 145 or 85. Pulse is 96. The patient appears to be in significant pain. She's unable to move the right hip and the right leg appears shorter than the left. A pelvic x-ray is shown the image. Now, the question is not asking you to diagnose this as a fracture. Instead, injury involving which of the following arteries is most likely to lead to osteonecrosis in this patient. You guys know that when the hip gets fractured, especially at the neck of femur, this is where it gets fractured, there's an artery right there that supplies the head of the femur. So when the neck of femur is fractured, the head of the femur will no longer receive its blood supply and will therefore undergo necrosis. So which of these is the artery that supplies the neck of femur? That is how the question should be worded in your head. What is he asking you? He's asking you which artery supplies the neck of femur. So let's look it up right there in KenHub. By the way, the search function is so simple. I simply wrote down hip, you know, I wrote down hip and it got me so many articles. I chose the neurovascular to the hip and thigh, right? And so there's a video if you want to watch it, but I'd like to skip to this area. Makes me, it makes things so much easier. Here are the common iliacs, right? And it, branches out into internal iliac and external iliac and it's the external iliac that continues into the femoral artery and there is you know so many other arteries around this region that really do not supply the neck of femur this is the femoral artery this is the superficial epigastric and this is the deep femoral artery it's also in the choices by the way and you can see here how irrelevant it is it's not doesn't supply the um the neck of femur, right? The deep femoral artery goes and gives branches. And one of its branches, by the way, supplies the neck of femur. But you can't say that it's the deep femoral artery that supplies the neck of femur. And here we come to the artery that supplies the neck of femur. As you can see, here's the medial circumflex. And I knew the name by, like, right there. You can even... Common iliac artery. You know, you hear the, the guy saying common iliac common iliac artery okay so here this is how i knew medial circumflex femoral this is the artery that supplies the neck of femur guys you know you got a whole ar a whole article talking about this so yeah this is the correct answer the medial circumflex femoral finally a 19-year-old woman is evaluated in the clinic due to right-hand clumsiness. The patient injured the right upper extremity after falling off her bicycle six months ago. She has since had a pins and needles sensation in the right hand associated with mild weakness. By the way, guys, without finishing the question, there is a really, really common syndrome or like term for this, especially called bikers, you know. Uh, but I'm just going to finish the question, assuming you don't know it. The patient is worried as these symptoms are interfering with her piano lessons. She's an upcoming recital. Physical exam shows decreased sensation over the fifth digit and a flattened hypothenar eminence. I'm sure you guys by now have figured out that there's something wrong with the ulnar nerve, as we shall see in the atlas. Triceps reflexes are normal. This is normal. The nerve affecting this patient is commonly injured at which of the following locations? So the fact that the triceps is normal indicates that the radial nerve is perfect, right? So his, the examiner has already assumed that you know it's the ulnar nerve, and he's asking you a further question. Where is the ulnar nerve commonly injured? Now, the carpal tunnel would be the case if it was the median nerve. This is not the case, right? Um, surgical neck of humerus, this is for the axillary nerve, right? Um, I don't think there is a nerve 
at the coracal brachialis. Is the musculocutaneous? No, it's not right. Head of the radius? No. Let's take a look at what Ken Hop says. So I'm gonna search it with you guys. This is the home page. I'm gonna write down the ulnar nerve. And we have a whole article talking about the ulnar nerve. Here is the pathway right there. And it's telling you the motor supply, sensory supply. CADT1, the video about it. And here it is, C8T1, give the ulnar nerve and the brachial plexus. This is, by the way, the groove for the ulnar nerve at the medial epicondyle. This is another area where it is injured, but it's not the same one in our example where she has a problem with her hands. So, this is, by the way, a cadaveric picture too. As you can see here, we also have the branches. And I'd like to show you guys how close it is to the which carpal bone. This is the scaphoid lunate triquitrum pisiform hamate. And this explains why she had decreased sensation over the fifth digit and hypothenar eminence atrophy or weakness because as you can see this is what's supplied by the ulnar nerve finally the clinical relation here shows you guys that the common site of injury or compression include posterior to the media epicondyle which is the part i showed you above the cubital tunnel and goyon's canal and this is exactly the case here injuries characterized by tingling and numbness etc etc all right so guys, it's at the hook of hamate, right there, and I think there is also, you know, there is other stuff written here about the ulnar nerve. Alright, so here comes the time to talk to you guys about the giveaway. So, there is three steps to apply for this giveaway. Number one, you need to like this video and comment your favorite medical specialty. I really want to know you guys, like, what specialty you want to specialize in and why, why do you think this is important, etc. And please be sure to leave your email down there so I can include you, so I can count you in. And finally, share the video with your friends so they can also benefit from this giveaway. We're going to choose five people. You're going to get a premium subscription for a whole month. Enjoy the videos. Enjoy the Atlas. The deadline to apply is Sunday, September 26th. All right, guys. All the best.